this, this, this is what professional wrestling should be like more often. It should be fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can even have some really dumb, bad crap in it. And that can technically even be fun. And sometimes that's the most fun thing of all. But this, this week's episode of All Elite Wrestling Dynamite was easily the most fun I've had watching any All Elite show. Pay-per-view, television program, you name it. And you darn good and well probably know one of the reasons why. But you know what? You mark out for your mud show freaking outlaw wrestling bingo hall circle jerk everybody looks the same and dresses like crap type of people. And I'll mark out for my future international superstars that can actually draw some money, okay? That's what we're going to do. You do your thing. I'll do mine. But seriously, though, I had so much fun watching this week's show. Like, I was jazzed about it. Really jazzed about it. Like, even the beginning. The video package recapping Moxley and Omega and selling the fact that it was too much for Kenny Omega. He wasn't medically cleared, even though John Moxley somehow was. Whatever, that's fine. But at least you start off with that, tying back into the pay-per-view, and then you have Moxley come out against this Nakazawa guy, and you have him squash him in short order. At least they're going to start off with the match, do something different every once in a while. They did something different here. Set the tone a little bit for Moxley, short match, get it done the hell over with, and then get to the point which is him cutting a promo, issuing a challenge. It was a really good, short, effective opener. And I'm like, okay, that's something. Then you follow that up with the Dark Order versus the Jurassic Express. And the whole time, I'm depressed. And you know why. This isn't even about hating Jungle Boy or Marco Stunt or the Dark Order or anything like that. It's just the whole time I'm thinking about one man. I'm thinking about one dinosaur. So as this match happens and the Dark Order goes over and then they're trying to get Marco Stunt to join and they're trying to put the mask on him. I said, whoa, 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 wait a second, wait a second. This can only mean one thing. You would only do this for one reason and one reason only. He's back, baby. He's back. The Luchasaurus Impact in all elite wrestling. You want to talk about epic Marco type of moments for me? This is it. The hell with your stupid people. The hell with this guy that flips. The hell with that guy that flips. This dude is six foot five. Wears a freaking dinosaur devil mask. Sits there and headbutts people. Tail whips them and does standing back flips. Now that's a superstar. You don't do that to his boys, Dark Order. I was hoping he was going to squash every one of them, especially with the max fat ass. So I really never had to see him on TV again. The Luchasaurus is back. The Luchasaurus is back. They're not kicks. They're tail whips. Let me repeat that. They're not kicks. They're tail whips and devastating tail whips at that. If you couldn't get down with this epic type of return, then I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. Because the crowd was clearly digging it. You know I was clearly digging it. This angry wrestling man that don't like a damn thing about wrestling today. What thing dumb dumb dicks? I guess you're wrong, huh? Woo! The Luchasaurus. He's going to tail whip everybody on this AEW roster. And I can't wait for it. And it's going to be so good. Oh. Oh. And, and, and let's point this out for the record. For the record. Luchasaurus on show. Viewership increases. Luchasaurus not on show. Viewership decreases. Luchasaurus on show ratings go up. Do you get the point? Do you get the message here? Hey, this is so fantastic. I was so geeked out 
that I really just tuned out the next 20 to 30 minutes of the show because who the hell gets a crap? Sean Spears versus the librarian dude that's not Leva Bates and fucking Darby Allen. I still try to figure out what the hell Darby Allen's ring gear is supposed to be, why he's painting half his face, nobody will bother to freaking tell me. Or let me guess, that's one of those things that i got to research. Well, you know what? This week I don't even have time to be worried and bothered with bitching about a company trying to tell me that i got to do research on the people they're supposed to get me to get them out. Even though I just did. Because it was about the Luchasaurus. And you got these people probably marking up. Because you could get it in the in the Going after Sean Spears. Darby Allen winning the match and then answering John Moxley's challenge. Cool. Develop a character a little bit and have him do something cool. Fine, whatever. But who gives a crap because they're not the Luchasaurus? Nyla Rose squashed somebody in short order. Who cares? Did you know who would squash her? The Luchasaurus! And then, of course, in the climate of today's society, and in particular with All Elite Wrestling being this inclusive company, it is so reassuring to know that the racism can even extend to the black women in the damn company. It's bad enough when the big bad beefy bitch is literally named after King frickin' Kong. Now we gotta sit there and pull up knives and be scalping white women's hair like they're freaking Native Americans. It's not only white people that have the market corner when it comes to racism, apparently. Equality my ass. Because everybody can sit there and throw some shade and some hate and some racism around. But seriously, what's the point here? Oh, she's going to scalp everybody that's ranked up to the number one contender and then she's going to come for Riho and nobody gets a crack. <sighs> I hope that pussy's good, Cody. And by the way, it's your punk ass. How the hell did you impregnate her already? Unless you told me that you can't get her pregnant if you nut in her butt or you put it in her mouth. Then at that point, even I would bow and salute you, sir. Which brings us to the crossover middle of the show main event. My goodness, there's Chris Jericho looking like he got off a bit of a little bit of a bend, bubbly bender. Yeah, looking a little old and rough still. Can't really get over that. Um... But MJF, well, I would have maybe liked to have seen this at the beginning of the show, that's perfectly fine. You know, I might have had a heart attack and died if I got this epic all-time classic babyface promo from MJF followed up by the freaking Lucha's heart. And that's right, people, I said it. The babyface promo that MJF cut. Maxwell Jacob Friedman, based on what he dropped, those truth bonds in just a couple of minutes, easily number two babyface in the company behind the Luchasaurus. The back and forth, the witty banter between him, Chris Jericho, was phenomenal. This is why Chris Jericho is your world champion and not somebody like a hangman freaking page. Incredible type of stuff here. Who's Hoovy? Who's Hoovy, MJF? Who's Hoovy? Who's Hoovy? Unbelievable. And just when you think they're going to ruin this, by having the heel, Cody Rhodes, come out and try to get some heel heat on himself. And you know what? I don't care what the AEW media is trying to tell you. I'm the one that cuts through the noise. I'm the one that gives you the real deal dope and truth here, baby. As Cody Rhodes comes out to try and get some heel heat on himself. To try and sit there and undercut everybody. That megalo maniac. Here comes war, little big beefy badass. To save the freaking day. Yes! Yes! 1,000 times yes! So let's see what was accomplished here in this one segment. Chris Jericho, money on the mic. Maxwell Jacob Friedman, babyface promo of the year. Cody Rhodes comes out, gets his heel heat because he's a piece of crap, and Wardlow debuts all impressive and strong and massive and mighty, and babyfaces his ass through the ring. It's phenomenal. Like at this point in time, it didn't matter what else happened in the show. Pack and Hangman Page had a match, and I'll say this. I try to treat the shows independently. The companies, the brands independently. 
But if I'm going to crap on WWE for consistently doing this crap, which is just having a rematch right after the pay-per-view, therefore saying to yourself, why the hell bother with the match on the pay-per-view? Just get on free TV anyway. Especially when you pay $50 for the damn pay-per-view. Well, then I'm going to crap on AEW all over for this. Don't be sitting there and coming right back to this freaking match that next Wednesday when you just had it on the damn pay-per-view. That's lazy, that's sloppy, that's stupid. That's a type of crap that we don't want to see out of your company. That's why people have left the WWE in droves. So don't do the same crap that they do. No excuses. None. Just again, a reminder, though, I look at Pac, I'm like, he could really use a mid-card title. Just throwing it out there. Then you had the big brawl between the Bucks and Pride and Powerful Santana and Ortiz. We're here, we're queer, and we're going to beat the Bucks to suck all over this arena. Going to scratch your eyes out with claws with some paws, baby. I guess I'm Come on now. Pride and Proud and Powerful, rally. 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 But this whole thing kind of culminates in this kind of Ron Simmons boogeyman type of shit with Orange Cassidy. Now, if this is what they start doing with Orange Cassidy, then you know what? I'm 1,000% down with it. You know how Ron Simmons used to just appear and he'd say, Damn! Or then you have the boogeyman just randomly show up for the F all of it. Orange Cassidy can do the same damn thing. Why was he in the bathroom with the door closed, leaning up against the wall with his hands in his pockets? Well, you can envision he was playing some pocket pool, but that was all his business and none of yours. He was just trying to apply the juice to himself, if you know what I mean. But you did this type of stuff, and then we'll hop down with it. And then the main event, SCU versus Chris Jericho and the Spanish god, Sammy Guevara. My disappointment in this is that Guevara should be there to do the job. Jericho shouldn't be doing the job. I know you're facing off against the tag team champions, and you're the heel team, allegedly. But the inner circle, if they're going to job here, that's why you have a Sammy Guevara in the match. This is where it sometimes frustrates me with Chris Jericho, to where you have other egomaniacs in the business that don't put people over at the right time. Chris Jericho too often puts people over when he shouldn't. If you want SCU to win because they're the tag champs, fine. Then have Jericho serve up Sammy Guevara as kind of a sacrificial lamb here. And then have Jericho go batshit after the match. Just saying, like, let's stop this. Stop having your champ, world champion get pinned like this. Because it wasn't like it was a match that you really built up to. And I wouldn't really say that SCU is such a hot tag act that you can sit there and justify that. Just kind of weird. But nonetheless, one going to ruin my enjoyment of this show. MJF was one of the best babyface, and I repeat again, babyface promos I've heard in some time. Everything was true. The back and forth between him and Chris Jericho was magnificent. And the Luchasaurus is back in AEW. He's going to tail whip everybody. Woo! And I am here for it. That's me tail whipping. You know what? I'm getting old, losing a little hair, even though I got more than most of y'all fucks at 38 than you've got at 28 or 33 or 23, so kiss it. That's about the best tail whip you're going to get out of me. You know why? Because I'm not the Luchasaurus. The tail whips should be left for him. This show was so much fun this week. God, I loved it. 